Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is going to be my first of those classic movie reviews for this year. You know, I did that last year, but for this year, this is my very first one. And, you know, I did these last year. I started them up, and I kind of didn't get a chance to finish them. I think the last one I did last year was Seed of Chucky. I think that was the last one I did. And uh, after that, I really didn't do any more of these. But I want to start them up again for you because I like doing them. I have a ton of movies to watch um, over the summer this year that I've never seen. And if you guys don't know how these classic movie reviews work, is what I do is I review a, mo a classic movie that literally everyone loves. And it's usually like one of the best movies everyone says that I have never seen. And I review two guys, let you know what I think about it, if I think it's as good as everyone says it is. And that's what I'm going to do. So the first movie I'm going to be reviewing to you today is The Breakfast Club. Yes, The Breakfast Club. Now, this is a movie that I've wanted to see for a while. And I'm surprised, actually, I haven't seen it. Because, one, I am in high school. And pretty much if you're in high school, you need to watch this movie. If you're in high school like me. Um, two, I've always wanted to see it ever since they did the uh, parody of it on Victorious. Which, yes, I do. I did watch that show. And I saw that episode, and overall I thought it was a funny episode. And ever since then, I wanted to see this movie. And the reason I started specifically with The Breakfast Club is, one, I'm still in high school. I'm still, I'm still, I mean, I'm still in school. Um, so I thought, you know, I'd watch a movie where I'm still in school. And I just thought I'd, I'd enjoy this movie a lot. And that is exactly the case. I loved The Breakfast Club. I thought it was a fantastic movie. I really, really loved this movie. It, it was just fantastic. It's it's hands down one of the best movies I've ever seen in my life, and I just, I loved it. So I'm going to get to some reasons um, why I loved it so much, and we're, you know, starting off with what the plot of The Breakfast Club. Plot of The Breakfast Club sounds pretty simple, but it's it's a lot more than just that. Uh, the plot of The Black Breakfast Club is you have five students who they basically don't have basically nothing in common. They don't have much in common with each other. And basically, they are in detention, and they got detention for whatever reason. We don't really know why they got detention, um, but they're in detention. That's not important. Why they got detention? Um, but they're in in this detention literally the whole day long. Now, I don't think any high school ever does that, but they but this school they're in detention all day long from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. And basically. While they're there, they actually end up becoming really good friends. At first, they hate each other, but they end up becoming really good friends. And they find out a lot more about themselves, a lot of backstories revealed and things like that. And there are different reasons for each of them. And that's basically the movie. It's it's That's pretty much the movie. And uh, I will say one thing about this movie. You cannot call this movie a comedy. You just can't. If you think of this movie as a comedy, you're not going to enjoy it because... It's not really funny. There are some funny scenes. I mean, any scene that are funny, they are funny. But it's not really a funny movie. It's more of a serious movie. And we're going to get to the best part, but let's first talk about the acting in this movie. The acting in this movie is phenomenal. I mean, there's a reason why this movie is such a classic. It really is, as I said, such a classic for everyone. And I think it's because of the acting is definitely a huge part of it. Um, Emilio... Estevez is the main guy, Andy. He is just, he's fantastic. I mean, he did a really, really great job in this movie. Um, I think he was definitely really, really good. Um, he plays the athlete of the group, this one right here. Very good job from him. He, he's really, really great. I um, thought he did a really nice job. Um, Paul Gleason as, um, as the principal, Vernon. Hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. He had me laughing on the floor in some scenes. He provides a lot of the comic relief in the movie. Very, very funny. I thought he was absolutely hilarious. Um, Anthony Michael Hall as Brian, also great. Anthony Michael Hall is always a great actor. You know, the only thing I've seen Anthony Michael Hall really though in is awkward, so... But he is great in this movie. I thought he did a really, really great job. Um, I think my favorite, though, I like out of all of them was definitely Judd Nelson. Oh my god, John Nelson. He plays such a great role in this movie. He had such a great role, and I thought he did such a great job in this movie, and I just thought he was amazing in this movie, in my opinion. I just thought he was so, so good, and he has probably one of the most touching stories out of all of them. I'll get to some of the spoilers, but basically, um, his character is really great. Um, Molly Ringwald as Claire, really, really great. You know, you expect her to be sort of like this slutty girl at first, because she... The minute you see her, she's like, I don't want to be here. I don't deserve to be here. You kind of see her like this spoiled rich girl. And, you know, she's really, really great in that in that role. And then the only other person is Al is Ali Sheedy as Allison. And she is the, um, she's one of the other people there. 
But let's talk about um, what I really like about this movie. Now, the big thing about this movie is that the whole point of this movie is stereotypes. I think that's the big message of this movie, is that you cannot stereotype people. You just can't. Because, we'll get someone to get to the spoilers, but of course, you know, you can't stereotype people because these five friends think they know each other quite well, and it turns out they don't really know each other well at all. And that's very, very, that's a very big message with the whole stereotyping thing. You can't stereotype people. You can't think of somebody as a certain way, you know. Um, for example, you think the athlete would be sort of like very like tough and everything, which he is, but he also has a heart. You think the criminal would be very tough, but he actually has a lot um, to think about. And you think that this girl, the prom queen, would be the slutty one. You think she'd be slutty and everything. And, um, you know, I thought it was really, really big in those reveals. So, I mean, I am going to get some spoilers. I know most of you have probably seen this movie, so you don't need spoilers. But in case you have not seen this movie... Um, if you have not seen The Breakfast Club ever, which you definitely should, and don't be like me who's never actually seen the movie, but if you've never seen The Breakfast Club, I'm going to give a couple spoilers, which are really important. If you don't, um, again, if you have not seen Breakfast Club, I'm going to ruin this movie for you. So I want you guys to see this movie for yourself, so don't, um, don't watch the rest of this review. You have not seen The Breakfast Club. All right, let's get to the best part of the movie, in my opinion, or the big reveals. When we found out, I mean, this movie, there was one scene that almost made me cry. When we found out that John wanted to kill himself, I almost cried because I'm just like, holy shit, is he going to, like, commit suicide? I was so upset with that. I mean, it was really, really big when we found out he wanted to kill himself. I thought he was actually going to go through with it, and he didn't. I was glad he didn't go through with it, but I thought he was going to, and he didn't, so that was a great thing. Um, also, when we found out that Claire was not a virgin, I... Honestly, I was surprised by that. You know, I thought—I mean, when we found out she was a virgin, I was surprised by that because, of course, she was calling out um, the other kids for not being a virgin, and that was because she was not a virgin. You know that you know for being virgins, and that was because she was a virgin. And uh, I thought that was pretty good because it just shows you can't stereotype people. And I do like that they all became friends in the end. And, of course, you have that great line at the end of this movie. Also, I loved it when Allison, you know, we, when Allison we found it as, like, this compulsive liar. I love the makeover that she got at the end of the movie. That was definitely very, very well done. And, uh, yeah, I really love that as well. And, of course, you know, it's it's it was so great when they all just became really great friends. I love that they became really great friends from this, and that's really, really great. I will say that this movie is a little bit unrealistic. Of course it's unrealistic. I mean, I've had detention before. It is nothing like this. You can't talk to people in detention. You can't do anything in detention. You can't even sleep. Um, you have to do your homework, and that's it. So, But overall, you know, I, I really like that they did become really good friends at the end of this movie. It was really, really great. Um, let's talk about some of the classic things about this movie. Of course, there's that classic end speech where you have um, John write that letter, and it says, you know, you can't tell us, you know, we already know who we are, and, you know, that's an athlete, a basket case, a princess, a brain, and a criminal. That's who they are, but they're more than that, and I think that's such a great line, because it just shows that even though they are those stereotypes, they're not just that. They do have souls, they have hearts, they care, they're not just those people that they people think they are. Like, people think they are a certain way, and they're not that way. For example, there are plenty of athletes in my school who are actually very down-to-earth, and they're not spoiled or anything like you think they would be, and I think this movie just shows very well to basically look at someone a second chance. You know, don't think of someone, don't hate someone just because they're a certain way, because they could be a lot more like you than you think, because they all realize at the end of this movie that all their parents, they have very bad family relationships, and they all realize at the end of this movie, and that they all are a family at the end of this movie, and I think that's a really great message in the movie. And then, of course, there's the uh, the classic scene where they're all on drugs and everything. I love the scene where they were on drugs. It was very, very funny. Um, the scene where they were like on drugs, and then they were showing the talents off. I like that scene overall because it was them bonding. I really enjoyed that. Of course, there's this classic dancing scene, which was great to see. The funniest scene in this movie, though, as I said, there is, you know, some funny scenes in this movie. The funniest scene in this movie, I think, is probably the, uh, either the dancing scene, the scene where they're high. I think it's probably the, the montage scene where they're high. I mean, that scene was really, really funny. I thought that was definitely really funny, and I overall really, really enjoyed it. But the other thing I love about this movie is that this movie starts off as a comedy. It really does. It starts off as a comedy, but the second half of this movie, it turns into a drama, and it gets really, really dramatic, and... 
I think the reason it's so critically acclaimed is because of the fact that, again, you can't stereotype people, plus anyone can relate to these people. It's a very relatable movie still. Like, we have even more stereotypes now. Like, you could redo this movie in the modern times. It's not going to happen. I'd rather them not do that. But if you did redo this movie in the modern times, basically the modern version of this is Glee. Glee is the modern version because of the stereotypes, I think. I think that kind of made all that happen. And that's this is kind of where all the stereotypes started off was in this movie. And I think from there, that's where everyone's always thought of stereotypes is because of The Breakfast Club. And I think that's that's just the truth of The Breakfast Club is that it's one of those movies that is just so, so good. And I will say that if you are in high school, you must watch this movie. I don't care if it's an 80s movie. I don't care if you think, oh, it's an 80s movie. It's not going to be good. No, you guys need to watch this movie. It will change the way you think about high school. Literally, for me, it's changed my way, I think, about some things a little bit. Like, I mean, I don't stereotype people. I'm not one, I'm not one to stereotype people. However, I'm definitely, like, this movie taught me to look, to give it, to give people a second chance and don't think of a certain person in a certain way just because of the way they, they are. Like, the criminal is not really a criminal. He definitely has more of a heart than we think he does. And, you know, there were just some... As I said, it's it's really, really great the way they did that. I mean, it, it, it there's some really great lines in this movie. I thought it was fantastic. And, you know, like, you know, Andrew with his overbearing father, Allison's compulsive liar, John came from an abusive household, Brian complained, complained suicide, and, you know, Claire's a virgin. They just have all these flaws to them. And I love that about this movie, that it shows that everybody has flaws. Nobody's perfect. Like, for example... Everybody thinks that Claire is so perfect. They think, oh, you're so perfect, you're so conceited. But she says, no, I'm not conceited. It's just, and she says, no, I'm not conceited. It's that I don't want anyone to know the truth. Because she wants people to think of her as this slutty girl who will have sex with anyone. But really, she's just sort of like a, a tease sort of person. That's really who she is. And I think that's just such a great thing about this movie is that it's it's a very good movie. It's definitely one of my favorite. It's definitely probably one of my favorite A's movies that I've seen. I've seen quite a lot of A's movies because my parents were born in the 80s and they make me watch a lot of 80s movies. This is definitely one of my favorites because I chose to watch this one. I chose to watch this one because I knew it was going to be great and it really was great. Everybody needs to watch The Breakfast Club. I don't care if you are in high Even if you're not in high school, if you are at some point going to high school or if you've been in high school... How, if you have never seen this movie, you need to watch The Breakfast Club. It's an amazing movie, and you will just, you'll love it, especially, and of course, the song Don't You Forget About Me, I'm just going to tell you, this, that song's going to get stuck in your head. I was singing along at the end of the movie, because it's such a great song. I mean, I love that song, but I was singing along to it at the end of the movie, because it's such a powerful song, and it's just such a great song, and I love that song so much, but... Definitely, if you have not, you need to watch The Breakfast Club. It is literally just amazing. All right. So that's it for my review of The Breakfast Club. Let me know what you guys saw this movie. Um, who's your favorite in the movie? I think everyone in the movie did a really, really great job. Um, I'm going to be doing another classic movie review at some point, probably tomorrow. I'm going to try to get two in tomorrow that I have to do. But my next review will be for um, tonight's episode of Orphan Black. So I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.